There we go, Seattle. That's how you get the job done. You go at home against the Carolina Panthers and get the win. The Seahawks, I'll admit, they didn't start strong. The first quarter, second quarter was kind of rough. We're down 13-12 to 12 at halftime. We come out third quarter, get a stop, get a field goal. It's 15-13. to 13. You're thinking, oh boy, what could happen? Carolina has a chance to take the lead. Uh, they're in the red zone, down by two, and then they miss the field goal. Um, and then it's still 15-13. And then finally the Seahawks end up coming out and scoring not one, not two, but three touchdowns in the second half of this game. Jake Bobo catches his first career touchdown, uh, and then Kenneth Walker gets the other two. Uh, we did allow a couple of garbage time points to Carolina, but it doesn't end up mattering. Seahawks win it 37-27. to Great game. Uh, Seattle dominated this game uh, from start to finish as far as the line of scrimmage. We moved the ball much better than Carolina did. They got a fluky 65-yard touchdown to take the lead in the second quarter. Um, Andy Dalton, still worth a few good plays a game. But I, and I have to say, the Panthers had me nervous. We've lost to Andy Dalton three times in his career. We've only beat him twice. Today was the second time. We lost to him last year with the Saints. We also lost to the Panthers last year. So I was definitely nervous when it was when we were down at half, and I was thinking to myself, oh boy, it's a rainy game. This could definitely get away from us here. But we end up not getting away from us. Geno Smith rebounds after uh, the uh, interception that led to a field goal for the Panthers. Um, and in the end, the Seahawks, the Seahawks got the job done. I mean... Was it, a, was it a perfect game? It was not a perfect game, but it, it was a much better game than the Rams, and it was a much better game than I expected. I mean, Gino was fine. Gino was nothing special today. Um, and DK and Tyler and Najigma, all of the receivers kind of kind of weren't weren't playing in the game. I mean, they were in the game, but they weren't really getting noticed. Uh, DK especially uh, made a few good plays, but for the most part, DK was not the guy who was starring today, um, and neither was Tyler. So it's good to see some of our backups like Jake Bobo, get in on the action. Uh, and Kenneth Walker, he had an incredible game. I, he, he was close to 100 yards. I'm not sure if he actually crossed the 100 marker, but he had a really good game. Um, and the run game, just in general, Jack, Zach Charbonnet had the best game of his young career. He had an incredible play down in the fourth quarter. Um, wound up, he, he went like 20 yards, pushed a couple guys, stiff-armed, uh, nearly scored his first NFL touchdown. Uh, DJ Dallas had some good returns. Uh, so Seattle, just the run game especially, we were dominant. And our, our offensive line, credit to them, man, they were hurting today. Four out of our five starters uh, are injured, but they still uh, they still played well. Charles Cross, not back yet, but they still played well, uh, at least well enough for us to drop 37 points on the Panthers. Um, Gino was under pressure. I will say Gino was under pressure, especially in the first uh, and second quarter. It's a lot of pressure in the second quarter on Gino. And that obviously was when he threw the pick, but they, I, th I thought the O line rebounded nicely. But what I'm really impressed over was our coaching. Right, second quarter we got down and we started pressing the, and we started trying to throw the ball way too much, and it wasn't working. We were being pressured. We were trying to press and throw the ball down the field, and it was not working. And I said, just run the football. The running the football worked in the first quarter. Kenneth Walker was playing well. And our offensive line was blocking well for the run. They were not blocking well for the pass. Second half comes in. The Seahawks did exactly what I said. They started mixing in the run a lot more, and it worked exactly how they wanted it to. It worked right to their advantage. And we ended up being able to go right down the field in the second quarter. I believe we didn't. I think we scored on five of our six possessions, or maybe four of our five possessions in the fourth quarter. But we scored on almost every possession we had, other than, I think, one punt, maybe two punts, and then the, the interception, everything else, we scored five field goals uh, and then three touchdowns. And we get a two-point conversion, which put the game away. Um, and it was at the point where it was 37-20. And when Adam Thielen caught that garbage time touchdown, I was actually cheering because I have Adam Thielen on my fantasy team. So I, did, I wasn't even mad. I was not even mad when Adam Thielen scored that touchdown because the Seahawks already put the game away. And, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, there's, still some, there's still some things, though. Injuries, they're starting to really stack up, and we're seeing this in the defensive secondary. Julian Love, he, he really has no business being out there. We need Jamal Adams to come back, hopefully next week. That's what I'm hearing. Um, and, and also, you know, from the cornerbacks, right? Uh, Witherspoon's been playing really well. 
and I've given I'm, I'm I'm really happy with what I've seen out of him. He is he's playing aggressive, hard football. I think he has potential to be a top ten cornerback in the league very soon. The problem is the rest of the guys on the cornerbacks they're not carrying the weight. Kobe Bryant's been okay, Michael Jackson, um, but then you know you've got guys like uh, I oh, why why am I forgetting? Hang on, I gotta pull this actually up. The guy who we just brought in. The guy who we literally, I mean, we just we just brought him in this year, so I, I, I'm not kicking myself for forgetting his name. Artie Burns. Artie Burns um, did not play well. Uh, Jarek Reed was okay. Trey Brown was uh, decent today. Um, but, you know, there, there's just... You, you can tell you can tell we were missing Tariq Woolen today. We were missing Jordan uh, Jamal Adams today. Um, so that's just something to, to pay attention to. Hopefully, hopefully Jamal's back next week. I'm not sure when Tariq Woolen will be back. Hopefully soon. I know he has a chest injury, so we'll see about that. But can we talk about the line? The defensive line actually played well today, and it was really nice to see that. You've got guys like Jaron Reed, Boye Mafe, Darrell Taylor. These guys are actually playing very, very well now. And it, it's really working out for the Seahawks. Is that first game against the Rams, we had literally no pass rush. Our D line was not stopping anybody. Today we stopped the run and we had a pass rush. So it was like the double whammy, right? Panthers couldn't throw, they couldn't run. Andy Dalton, to his credit, played a good game. He usually pl tends to play well against Seattle. And he, again, continuing to prove that he's a good quarterback. He's a guy who could definitely be starting for some of these teams. You look at the Titans, how bad Tannehill is how bad Sam Howell was today for the Commanders. Andy Dalton could be on a team as a starter, but he wants to be that mentor to Bryce Young. He played well today. Got to give him some credit. Adam Thielen had a good game. The Panthers did not go away easily, but it was clear the whole time, even when we were losing, even when we were only settling for field goals, it was clear the whole time that the Seahawks were the much better team, much more talented team with better coaching and a home field advantage that was clear because the Panthers nine I believe it was nine false start penalties uh the record is 13 so the 12th man we were out today we were causing penalties left and right we were loud we were obnoxious it was rainy and the Panthers were just outmatched they played really really hard their defense got some really key critical stops early in the game which held us down they got the interception they held us Four straight times we went to the red zone and had to settle for a field goal. That's crazy, but luckily Jason Myers didn't sell us the game like he was trying to do last week against the Lions. And in the end, Seattle, we had the much better team on the field, the much better roster, we had the home field advantage, and we had better coaches who did learn and adjusted the game plan at halftime. That's why Seattle came out on top. We looked dominant today, and in the second quarter, we established that dominance. We pounded into the heart of Carolina and by the fourth quarter, you could tell we were going to win that game. It was When it was 29-20, to 20, you could tell we were going to win that game, and we did, and I'm happy about it. And we're moving on to next week against the Giants, so hopefully we get another win there. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe down below. This is the NW Sportscast, your number one home for Seattle Seahawks and Seattle Mariners content, as well as just general sports around the rest of the league. We talk a lot of NFL and a little bit of MLB, NBA, um, and all kinds of sports. We, we listen to our fans. We listen to what people like. Uh, we do reactions. We do post games. We do predictions, pre-games, power rankings, all that good stuff. Um, and we are just continuing to grow and expand. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, and yeah, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, follow us everywhere. Subscribe. Comment down below. What did you think was going to happen in this game? Did you think the Seahawks were going to win? Did you think the Panthers were going to win? I was worried. I did pick the Seahawks in my Pick'ems League. Um, I didn't make a video, a pregame video. I was going to yesterday. It got busy. But I was going to pick the Seahawks. Um, I was worried. I, was, I, I tweeted out. I was worried. But we did get the job done and uh, proving me right on my Pick'ems. So now I'm 2-1 because uh, I picked this to win all three games, and we've won two of them. So awesome job by the Seahawks. This week, next week, up against the Giants. So again, comment down below. Do you think we can beat the Giants this week? Do you think, uh, what, what's your final score prediction? We'll have a pregame, and we'll have more postgame coverage coming on the rest of the week. Tomorrow, we'll have a po uh, more of a, some in-depth analysis for you guys tomorrow. This has been the NBA Sportscast. See you in the next one.